So when it comes to making the stargazer lily, there are quite a few components in the flower before you actually get to assemble it. Also, within the variety or the species of stargazer lily, there are lots of variations. Some are incredibly curly, some are frilled, some are not so frilled, some have dots, some have little snipped hairs, some have stamens and pistils that have got brown on the end, some yellow. So basically, if you're looking to make them, I would say do an internet search for images and work from those, unless you're lucky enough to have a good florist near you and you work from the real flower, which in my opinion is the best way to do it. So let's start work on the, the stamens then. I've got a white 26 gauge wire and I need to make a T wire or I need to make um, a ski handle. So I'm going to take the end, I'm going to fold this over so I've hooked it over totally. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to bend it back. As you can see, that's given me a T. So what I did is I folded that over and then folded it back on itself. So as you can see, I get the T shape. Some people will actually call that a ski, a ski handle or a ski hook. Okay, so that's, that's where we're starting with this. Um, you will need six of these per flower. Then I'm going to take a pinch of my gum paste. You don't need a large amount because you're going to put edible pollen onto this. And the moment you put edible pollen onto it, it's going to suddenly grow in size. So I'm going to roll out just the smallest amount into a tiny little torpedo shape. I'm going to take a paintbrush, put a little bit of edible glue on the end of my T-wire and embed it into the back of my piece of paste. Sometimes it picks up, sometimes it doesn't pick up. Um, I put a bit of cornstarch on my fingers just to make sure that I totally encase that wire. Now, once the wire is embedded in there, I'll go in and I'll take a palette knife or a sharp knife, whichever is easiest to hand, and I will put a line down the middle. I'll then turn the end ever so slightly down because that's characteristic of it. Now when it comes to colouring these up or finishing them off, I'm going to bring into play a little bit of dust colours here. I'm going to take my white wire, I'm going to use some leaf green and I'm just going to dust my wire. You're probably asking yourself, why didn't I use green wire to start with? I find the green wire makes it look too harsh. So I'll set that to one side a second. Take this back out of flame. We'll be using that later on. So that's given me my starting block. Now we're going to use edible pollen. Um, you can buy edible dust pollen, usually where you buy your edible food dusts for flower making. If you haven't got access to this, buy some polenta, put some dust colour in, mix it around, you'll end up with the same. I'm using yellow on here. You can use brown. It depends again on the species. So I'm going to go in, take a little bit of edible glue. I don't want too much on here. Just enough to wet that. Then I'm going to immerse it in here, move it around a bit tap off the excess and that gives me what I was looking for. Usually these have a slight curve to them. So I give it a curve and I will set that to one side to dry. So again you will need six of those. Now those were the stamens. When it comes to the pistil, then that's the bit that comes through the middle of the flower. Um, this is a 24 gauge wire. This can be a little bit fiddly if you've not done this before. So just bear with me and I'll try and talk you through it. So I'm going to start off by rolling a little bit of a sausage. Dip the end of my wire in, take the excess off. And then I'll twist this in until it's about two thirds up. Then using cornstarch fingers, I will work this down the wire. And all I'm doing, I'm gently supporting it, but I'm twisting and squeezing as I go. 
I need to bring this down the wire as long as the petal would be. So I'll only know that by looking at my cutter. This is the cutter I'm using. I want it to at least come to there on the cutter. Now if you work too quickly with this, you're likely to have the wire come out the end. So just be aware that that may happen with you. If it does, just start again, it's easier. When I'm almost there, I'm going to put it in my hand and give it a bit of a rub. This will actually give this a nice smoothness to it. Oops, there it goes. I think for me that's probably almost there. Now, a couple of things you need to do immediately. Immediately bend the wire slightly. Try not to mark the paste and if you do, go in and rub it with your fingers just to make sure that it's nice and smooth again. Now the end of it has characteristic three little marks in it. Um, I describe them as the letter Y. If you don't get the marking with this, you can always go in and re-establish them with the end of a small palette knife or a knife. Okay, so that's given me that. The next thing I need to do now is put some dust on that. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow to start with. Just any dust colour you've got is fine. This just gives it a bit of life. I don't want to go all the way to the base of this pistol though. Just because it's going to look like the green is fading out. Then I'll take a bit of green and I'll go from the top downwards. Now it depends on the species you use. Sometimes this is just green. Sometimes you might find there's brown or yellow pollen on the end of this. I'm actually just leaving mine green. Once I've got it this far, I would glaze it. I could glaze it with a sprayed laser. I could dip it because eventually I'm looking to create that. So let's put that to one side. So that's given me the pistol and that's actually given me my stamens as well. So now I just need to move on now and let's take a look at the petals I need to create.